Alright, uh, hi, this is UBN. We are undergroundvideonetwork.com. Uh, you know us from such shows as Behind the Counter. This is kind of one, but no counter at the moment. But uh, we talk about comics, movies, and video games, and really that's about it. But um, we also talk about, you know, the artists and people who create for those three genres. And uh, this is, I guess, is our uh, farewell or, or, or whatever. It's kind of an awkward thing because we never met the guy personally. But his name was Michael Turner. And uh, recent, uh, about two weeks ago from, if you're watching this, he had passed away. He had a battle with uh, cancer. Um, and uh, I, I just know he had a type of bone cancer. And, uh, you know, it left him, uh, you know, paralyzed a lot. He went through a lot of treatments, I heard. Uh, yeah, a lot. So, but um, we're, we're trying to just, rem you know, give him a farewell and uh, remember him, you know, why did we like him so much. And uh, he got his start, and this is us from our head to yours, you know, we're not reading anything stuff. Um, from what from what I know, I'm reading um, Wizard magazines and all that stuff. Uh, uh, when the Seven Founders of Image, you know, some guys that broke away from Marvel because uh, they basically weren't getting the money they thought that they were due, rightfully sure. so. And um, they also were bringing up other people with them. Uh, each of the seven had Starting young upstarts, yeah. young kids. They had their studios. Yeah, they had they had their studio in their head. Some of them didn't even have a studio. It was just in their head they had studios and what they wanted in mind for. You know, he was bringing new creative forces into the market. So, you know, Jim Lee, he had a, 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 a homage, homage, like paying right. homage, yeah. homage studios. I can't ever say that word right. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, uh, Rob Liefeld at Extreme. Uh, they were all under the Image One company, so to say, Image and uh, Umbrella. Umbrella. And, uh, you know, Todd McFarlane just really had spawn. Todd to McFarlane. Todd McFarlane. And, and the he, toys. And, he, and the toys. And, and, you know, he had his artists, too. I just... They were just that's all true. under. They were all under Spawn. Oh, yeah. So you know, Greg Capullo he, is God. I think that's the only name I can think of that drew after him a lot. I don't remember. Greg Capullo. I quit yeah. reading after hundred, so I'm not sure. He was. I think Greg Capullo was a. Uh, the then. one. Yeah. yeah. He was. Yeah. He was there for a lot of. There was a lot that we can't even name them all. They're probably working in comics today, but uh, speaking about Michael Turner, uh, he was one uh, under uh, Mark Silvestri, who was famous for uh, Wolverine at the time. He, he was yeah, doing yeah. mostly Wolverine work, and um, that was his uh, upstart. And um, they helped create. In fact, I'll say Mike Turner was the first person technically to draw Witchblade. Yeah. So uh, Witchblade number one, if you're seeing it back here, um, that was technically, you know, which could have got get it wrong, you know, because he did pages and interiors, uh, helping with background, you know, being the background artist, because some of them weren't ready yet. And Witchblade was his first, you know, book. Yeah, top cow. Top, yeah, and that was a uh, Mark Silvestri's a, uh, uh, you know, umbrella group, you know, under image. Everybody was always under something. So. Until till the breakup. Yeah, and that always happens. That's a whole other story. Though. Right, right. But, a whole other episode. But well, a long story short, with that we we can shorten it. We'll talk about it later. But um, he grew well with the Witchblade. I want to say he stood on till about twenty five. I think that's about right. So, it's and it was while. immense, and during that time, it got super popular, and he, and we're not going to lie, Michael, Michael Turner, he drew uh, women amazing. His artwork was great. Yeah, I mean, the detail he put, uh, from cross-hashing to detail lines to, to drawing a, a vase, a glass, uh, and then his people and stuff, and then when he drew the witch blade, oh, the yeah. display just all over, just, uh, you know, and wrapped someone's body and just was just all powerful. It was just a god hand of sorts. So uh, Sarah Penzini was the character. Some of you might know there was a, a short-lived show, but it took a long time. This series has been around for what ten, a decade or two or close to, mm -hmm. close, yeah. very close to. They had a short-lived series that they tried um, to do, and um, TNT. Like I said, uh, money and budget, you know, it, it didn't help a lot. Ratings wasn't there. And ratings wasn't there. So, but it was I did that. His help, his co-creation was able to spawn a show. What? Yeah, yeah. What happened was, and I think we were more fans of him breaking away because after he uh, left Takao of sort, uh, he was still under him for a while with uh, Fathom. It was his created own brainchild of his uh, art and uh, his storylines, and I want to say it ran a good twelve issues because around this time we didn't really realize it. He was fighting cancer then. Yeah. Hence, uh, I always bitched about him having late books. They always were coming out late. And I just gave him the benefit of doubt he was a stereotype artist, that he was so good that he just could draw a book and it would sell, and he wouldn't have to do anything else. 
but they were immensely popular, and, and, and so was he, and you'd find out he was battling with that, and um, then he had a period where it went in a remission, and what happened then is uh, he finally, uh, I think there was a creative difference between him and Silvestri, and um, he got, uh, I guess, rights to, more rights to Fathom, but well, what he, he did, own, he we always own right, Fathom, but uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking it has something with money, well, problems, and issues, that's, it happened he to wanted, was, I think, was He just wanted to do his own. To break his own. Yeah. Well, when he broke to his own, he decided he had his own comic book company, which was Aspen. Aspen Comics, which you might be seeing the website behind us now, which was the whole Aspen world, Fathom, and all his characters. And what Mike did, which was awesome, is he did, like, I want to call his father, Mark Sylvester. He, uh, he did the same thing. He brought in, brought in a new batch of artists. That, but um, he had a tight-knit group. Just, just like the image bef before him, and he started bringing up his uh, people as well. But the cool thing about him, really important, was always thought, I kept thinking something was holding him back. I always wanted him to draw for Marvel and DC. It finally happened. DC got him for an exclusive contract for two years, yeah, something a year or two years, and they Superman. reinvented a, a, well, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, there was a Superman, uh, God Godfall? Yeah, Godfall. So uh, that series, uh, he did most of the cover work, and I think Talon Cadwell was doing most of the interior in there, I think. Yeah, I think so. so uh, but it was their production company. There's a trade paperback on that. If you want to experience you know, what he had help with, that's one thing to get and check it out. And what he actually had help with, where he did the, the exteriors and the interiors, was uh, they rejuvenated and brought back uh, the original Supergirl. And that was a good six issue run, I believe. I think so. Yep. So it was in um, Superman and Batman. I'm sorry. That was yeah. It was that. Yeah. yeah. So Superman and Batman. Um, there was six issues. It's probably trade paperback as well. And um, you know they brought back a uh, Supergirl origins uh, with her being the cousin of Superman. And you know his art really. I mean it really popularized Supergirl to unbelievable heights oh, again. Yeah. And it brought back the series and, and whatnot. And. Um, it was good, and then we thought everything was okay, and then uh, he even uh, agreed to uh, end his contract because you know Mike Turner was that cool of a guy. Was uh, he was going to turn DC down if they didn't let him uh, do Marvel stuff? Yeah, I think that's the yeah. So he had in his contract where he could still do Marvel stuff even though he was with you know DC. And so he did like, some covers, right? And that's that's what that's what what yeah what burns me the most was he was turning out some really really good covers. He was. All the stuff we mentioned about Civil War, most of his stuff, those covers were him. And they were there, you're probably seeing them in the back, then they were awesome and stuff. But, um, so what we were hoping is, uh, he would, you know, his legacy was hopefully to draw for Marvel. And I think that's what it was, I think that was what I Marvel so. was gearing up for. Uh, there was a, a Kenny X-Men <clears throat> issue 500 was coming up. He did an alternate cover to that. And, um, I think that's to me, you know, cause with it being a pinnacle issue, 500. I just thought, you know, okay, you know, Michael Turner on a Kenny X Men. I'm like, you know, how, how well the, you know, all yeah. the artists that have been there except oh, yeah. him. And then, you know, we got hit with the news this summer, and you know, it went went to the worst or whatever, and uh, and now he's gone. I, I I just hate the fact because I was like, I bet you a week ago I was still bitching about him not being able to draw or or or, or do something on time and. But the only reason was because I just I loved his art that much. I became more of a fan of his art because I wasn't even that big on him during Witchblade time or whatever. And then, I don't know, it just, something just sprung up. It just awoke or whatever in me that, you know, he was a really, really good artist. And what's really uh, unfortunate is on YouTube, uh, with the explosion of YouTube, there's a lot of artists that's putting their art online, which is beautiful. And he didn't really get that time to you know shine with you know like right. Jim Lee stuff you can see a lot of his uh, things uh, so most of the image artists sketching and stuff he he didn't get the chance to you know really put some of that on line and you know granted probably wasn't a good thing because he probably really wasn't filling up to it you know with, with him being ill and everything but uh man so um but we were just grateful for what he did for comics um, hell we were buying because of him we're still gonna be buying you know after him because there's a lot of artists that now Oh, they get their care. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're influenced. He's yeah. influenced a whole other generation. Yeah, so now that generation is either going to carry us on or carry us somewhere, wherever comics is going to go, as far as the media and uh, you know mainstream or whatever. So, but yeah, so as you can see, we 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 followed up a lot, and um, 
<laughs> we're gonna miss them, that's for damn sure. So uh, we just like to take this time to thank all the artists who, who were with him and were friends with them, his family. You know, God bless them and uh, take care and then, you know, see you wherever you at. <laughs>